first year the sessions like the what is the hplc systems the what is the basics the hplc is high performance liquid photography i move forward fast forward for this uh, technology of hplc so the hplc it is called as a high performance liquid chromatography as well as high pressure chromatography because it uh, sustains the 400 bar pressure back pressure creation through the uh, different type of columns so here there are the same terminology where is the routinely if the light material uh, goes fast and the heavy material uh, creating a uh, very much uh, role to go on through the baseline and it will create a certain issue and this this phenomena the uh, physics phenomena is captured for the uh, chromatography analysis and in uh, chromatography there are the two main phases are available mobile phase and stationary phase where the mobile phase is the moving phase and stationary phase is a uh, coated on a higher surface of the uh, columns which will interact with the uh, analyte and the mobile phase the interaction the absorption likewise so again the chromatography as the basics is chromatography is the method the chromatogram is the only the instrument where the chromatography is to be taken care to be performed and the chromograph chromatogram is the uh, data which is generated by the instrument using the method and chromatographer is the person who is performing the analysis so in liquid chromatography there are the mobile phase stationary phase and this sample is dissolved in the mobile phase can be analyzed mobile phase can be analyzed so this is the typical chromatogram where the signal versus time the peak is elevated the height the area per area the height the area per area this is the basic of HPLC system. Hope you all gone through that. There's the degasser, the pump, the mobile phase kept at the degasser. The degasser can uh, will degas the uh, any uh, soluble uh, gases which can interact uh, interact with the column. So it when we pump the auto sampler, the O1 detector, and detector can. Uh, produce uh, such signal which is captured by the data processor and finally the analyte come to the waste. So this is the pump uh, phenomena, what type of uh, uh, engineering uh, cap for the pump, the pump head and the reciprocal pump, the diagonal pump, okay, the dual plunger pump, the different technology and uh, the isocratic pump, the gradient system pump. In gradient system, there is the low pressure gradient, the high pressure gradient mixing also available. That will reduce your time up. And the recent one is the UPLC, Ultra Performance Liquid Chromatography, which can be utilized for the reducing of the analytical time. Even if you got the uh, analysis time by routine conventional uh, conventional HPLC system the hundred minute and uh, by UPLC you will get the same analytical same uh, resolution at a uh, ten minutes only the ten minutes so in recent scenario the UPLC is uh, most favorable uh, systems for the pharma industries because there are they are utilizing the most economical, the low solvent phase, the low electricity, the low manpower, and the more reproducibility. So this is the basics 
again the what is the gradient will help for the separation of the all analyte the impurity profiles the isocratic isocratic systems will take a such longer time and for gradient it will take a minimum time to resolve the all the all the analytes okay in the gradient system i pre briefly mention that the one pump will suction the all uh, related by the percentage of mobile phase a mobile phase b mobile phase c and mobile phase d likewise 50 uh, 25 10 5% age respectively so all the analytes whether we, you are using the buffer the solvents the another high pro, high, pro, high profile solvent like thf for a uh, uh, mdc for the uh, hello yeah uh, uh, for the chiral analysis it may get well reflex and the pump will suction out the solvent and in a gradient mixture the all solvent will mix properly and then pass through the uh, pump and the system and that will get a uh, well result in a uh, columns okay this is the pump key, key parameters isocratic pump the binary pump isocratic pump with the flow the binary gradient which will react the pressure maxima is the 400 bar the 200 bar the different kind of uh, systems are available so if i gone through the fast forward please uh, interrupt me uh, sir please so please blow okay asin sir yeah please no problem uh, already smooth uh, and this uh, instrument is a part is uh, cover so maybe if some speed no problem but after when uh, this part completion student more interesting again uh, to the utilization part and second thing sir please enlarge your ppt so uh, more uh, uh, okay 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 i will i will, I will. Okay, okay yeah now it is correct now it is okay yeah uh, not connected here means not enlargement occur full screen nahi nahi dekh uthe one minute na ye to main sir button dabayo barabar hai tu yahan click karu ye kal ek aur pacho click karo ha bas there might be some issue related to okay no problem sir continue <laughs> if not happen okay sir no problem Okay, continue, sir. No problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is the basic key feature of a pump. The degasser. What I earlier told that the degas of the any dissolved air or a dissolved gases which may occur, the baseline noise and the baseline drip in detector cell. This is the online degasser where the type of degasser. This is a helium pulse. Then vacuum. you can also apply this is the manual injection and recently the auto sampler is available in with the loop injection uh, technology so in direct injection there are the different type of uh, modes available where you have inject the concentration of 20 microliter 10 microliter whatever you desire as per your methodology you can introduce the sample with the auto sampler so in current uh, auto sampler there are the mode of uh, selection that you you may have to uh, cap the more than 100 or 200 uh, sample uh, vials and you have to just provide the method the sequence the in which vial you have to take uh, how much uh, number how much quantity of the samples the 5 microliter the 10 microliter 20 microliter 50 microliter vice versa so as per the method the instrument will take the sample and inject on a same 
column and provides the data. So in after the pump, the column over is the most key uh, area for the separation because at the room temperature, uh, some alanides may have a problem to elute the properly and get a baseline uh, noisy or a baseline tailing or a front fronting of the peak, which may occur the uh, actual quantitation problem. So for avoiding this, the column over the temperature is uh, established for the routine use and you may raise up to 60 degree temperature, then the all level analyte will get properly resolved. And the main detectors were you are using for the HPLC analysis is the widely used about 90 percentage. Ninety percentage of detectors for HVLC is using the UV VIS. Okay, so hope you all aware about the UV spectrophotometer and the UV range. And second one, the advanced version is the PDA. So PDA is the next version of the UV detector. And in uh, there is a restriction of the UV detector is you can perform Hello, my my settings is updated. Uh, update 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 एक और है वो ही तो सर प्रेजेंटेशन बंद करी ने पांच सौ चालू करी जो अलग वो माइट भी जो बने थे जैसे ओके 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 फिर नाउ इट इज करेक्ट नाउ इट इज रिजिलाइज यस वोटो सैंपलर यस यस की पैरामीटर ओके 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 इस द कॉलम ओवन देन मेजर डिटेक्टर्स यस यस यूज़ फॉर द यूवी डिटेक्टर द एडवांस वर्� in UV detector, you you may have the restriction to analyze the uh, sample on a particular uh, lambda max, particular nanometer lambda, or a dual dual nanometer uh, you are using. But in uh, PDA, once the sample is injected, you may have the extract the whole range, and anal uh, at a single run, you will get a different uh, spectra of the sample. And certain uh, certain samples which cannot be analyzed, which is not having the chromophobes, it can be analyzed by the fluorescent detector and the refractive index detector. So this is the phenomena of the UV detector, where the cell, the concentration, and how is the absorbance took place. So. Again, we discuss these uh, key parameters of uh, UV detector. So, what is the basic difference with the UV detector and PDA? In UV detector, you may have to deal with the deuterium lamp. Uh, while in PDA detector, you may have to uh, introduce the tungsten lamp with the deuterium. So it will cover the whole range of the uh, UV as well as the visible spectra. So that will capture the all type of analytics, analytics in a single uh, run. In PDA, how the data will be extracted? Uh, this the spectrum and the particular spectrum you will, you may get the uh, chronogram of each analyte. So this is the basic tool for the method development where you have to check the your sample on a PDA. So 
initially when you have checked with the pda then you may find that the lambda is the 254 or 270 or a 260 or a 220 whichever is suitable accordingly you may carry out your further experiment and the develop the method so this is the best key feature for the method development uh, related to the resolution and the proper illusion of the anal all analytes this is the terminology for the fluorescent detector that we you have to give some excitations uh, of to the your all analytes and the refractive index detector so where where the chromophore is not, not available in your analyte the fluorescent detector and the refractive index detector is more suitable for the quantitation and the qualitation of your uh, all components so is the finalization that the after the detector the your all data will be captured by the data processor and uh, the your system controller will capture and uh, evaluate the all data the interpret the all data and you may find the chronograms and uh, accordingly the each peaks shall be integrated properly by the uh, chronographer which we are uh, earlier discussed the chromatograph is the person who is performing the anal analysis so even if you are not properly integrated the all analyze your percentage of uh, material the impurity or uh, content might be vary okay so after that the all pc software the all data will capture for a uh, life long and it can be referred any time by the any analyst at anywhere you can refer the all data which will be available in your pc or your reference that the x number of uh, batch uh, will, uh, was contained the impurity a is the 0.02 percentage impurity b 0.5 percentage likewise so you may have the trend of your uh, all products all batches respect to the uh, pc control so in earlier where the chromatography is uh, developed there are no any uh, pc control uh, is available so manually the all data will be captured and the preparation of the trend so this is the basic uh, consumables what you have to require for the analysis for hplc analysis the tubing tubing is meant for the uh, mean uh, the material moc is the stainless steel the polyethyl uh, polyether the ketone pek and the tefnol contain the different type of uh, outer dia or inner dia as per your methodology you can use so this is the connectors connectors is mainly used for the connecting the pump section to the column the column to the detector so this is the key important uh, consumables even if you have some uh, leakages in this connector you may get your analysis not properly the peak uh, shaping is not proper due to the leakage of your mobile phase with respect to the column yes and this one is the dead volume where you have to uh, check with your each and every you know, system because when the dead volume is higher then it will affect your uh, peak separation the peak repro reproducibility because you are making a certain area where your analyte will 
uh, stable so it will get a uh, problem with your uh, routine analysis so in mobile phase you all aware about the different kind of uh, mobile phase is available starting from the high polar solvent as a water is the ultra pure water is the very most popular uh, solvent as a mobile phase and widely used in a reverse phase chromatography and organic solvent like uh, commonly used is acetonitrile the methanol again the thf certain amount the certain amount of triethylamine uh, uh, which can be considered to uh, avoid the tailing and the peak shaping properly and also the uh, chloroform the certain solvent is used for uh, chiral analysis is the hexane hexane and the uh, uh, thf uh, combination for the chiral analysis so this is the basic do's and don'ts that where you have to check whether the compatibility of each solvent when you want to convert your system after the reverse phase you don't after buffer use you don't ever place directly with the organic solvent replace with the directly organic solvent because once you replace with organic solvent that will you get precipitate in your column and it will get damage your column and it cannot be removed easily furthermore so you may have to check the compatibility of the each solvent likewise water to ipa or methanol then uh, uh, low po uh, low polar acetonitrile then methanol then hexane and vice versa you have to go through with the hexane through the water you cannot directly impose the water with uh, replace with the uh, hexane directly so this is the again the uh, degassing technique where is the ultrasonic uh, path is available so at that time the all uh, all gases will remove uh, due to the degasser the helium helium gas purging or a filtration vacuum filtration so, so in uh, hplc analysis the 80 to 90 percentage of chromatography technique is developed by the reverse phase chromatography so in reverse phase chromatography your column is non polar or a mediatory or intermediatory polar and your mobile phase is highly polar to the intermediatory polar so in polarity you may have to check the your solvent analyte uh, solubility whatever is available and with compatible with your column what you are using so basic two methodologies available normal phase and reverse phase in uh, in normal phase the stationary phase is high polar in reverse phase the low polar or a, or a intermediate polar the stationary phase and mobile phase is almost non polar for the normal phase or a very low polar and in reverse phase is a high polar once you use the buffer or a water it is con uh, considering the high polar and once you use the solvents and the saturated uh, solvents like hexane the chloroform or a ctc it is considering the low polar or a non polar and in reverse phase chromatography there are the different type of uh, stationary phases available the octadecyl silane the hypersil 
the base deactivated silane is available the silica column is available the amino column the phenyl column the uh, nitro column is available then the cyano column is available as per your uh, conventional method development you may use the different column as per your sol uh, component polarity as well as the solvent polarity So again, this uh, illustration related to the polarity. When once you use the ODS column, this uh, weak for the uh, phenol compound and strong for the toluene. So phenol compound is uh, eluted earlier, and the toluene is eluted later on. so this is the basics for the uh, mobile phase polarity versus retention time once once you increase the polarity your retention time is higher and when you reduce the polarity you can decrease the uh, all retention time the so all analytes first one is the in a pink is the red and the blue so in when you are comp uh, comparing the retention time you may have to check what is the uh, theoretical plate of your each analyte because your theoretical plate is not proper respect to your peak shape once you compromise with the uh, retention time the uh, it is very less but you may have the trouble with the theoretical plate once you got the this type of problem you may have to increase the polarity and separate out with the uh, retention time and increase the retention time then you will get the proper theoretical plates so in hplc there are basic two types of uh, determination quantity uh, qualitative and quantitative qualitative that means you may have to check your analyte by the qualitative measurement uh, respect to the area percentage or uh, uh, relative uh, area percentage with the, your main component and in quantitative there are the three four techniques is available is a direct estimation of your uh, component with the uh, internal standard and as per the farm europa the quantity with the diluted standard is considering the 20 ppm or a 50 ppm so it's called the related substance okay the related substance method the direct uh, assay method and the internal standard assay method by the quantitation so is the direct quantitation is uh, occurred by the external standard that it is readily available or in house uh, develop the standard so if the potency is the 99 percentage and you are analyte is uh, showing the 95 percentage against your specification is 98 to 102 or 90 to 110 in your uh, formulated drug so it is a directly measurement by using the external standard and once you use the direct standard plus any internal standard i am giving you example you have if you are considering the uh, assaying of the paracetamol so in that case you may use the external standard of the paracetamol is available from the ipbp or a usp okay and it is a direct measurement and once you, you add the another analyte like uh, Uh, pfb the parafluoro uh, benzene or uh, toluidine 
with the with the paracetamol and you know, on the same concentration you may have to add a same concentration starting from the diluent to the sample diluent the standard preparation as well as in a sample preparation so by the mean of the calibration curve with internal standard and the external standard you may get the actual concentration of analyte in your sample so this is the technique of external standard where the different concentration is available the c1 c2 c3 c4 and accordingly the area starting from lower side to higher side so you may get the calibration curve it it may change by the each and every analyte it may vary it by 0.9 to 1 okay and this one is the internal standard where your internal standard area is constant against the your external standard so you may get the concentration target target concentration versus internal standard uh, concentration this is the basics and uh, uh, widely used uh, established technology related to the hplc analysis of uh, uh, pharma apis as well as the uh, formulated drugs so for the H, uh, hplc applications is uh, whatever earlier i mentioned that the different type of detectors are available but by the uv visible detection it is very accurate precise robust with related to the quantitative as well as the qualitative uh, uh, methods and uh, globally it is acceptable and widely acceptable to the all pharmaceutical uh, industries and also by the uv you can measure the monitor the stability of your pure drug substance uh, or or a drug in a formulations in a quantitative and a qualitative manners with any degraded products also it is much uh, helpful for the drugs and then metabolite in a biological uh, fluids like uh, the syrups when and again in recent scenario the covid serum the vaccine is available it is not uh, different metabolite but is the biological fluid which is directly generated from the uh, dna and rna of the serums and it is widely determination the participation coefficient and pk values of the drug and protein bindings so this is the strength of the hplc analysis is the easily control because you can control the flow rate by 0.2 ml per minute to 2 ml per minute or 5 ml per minute the technique is very intensive uh, development for your uh, recent uh, new drug discovery whether by the mean of the help of the pda detectors you may find the uh, all uh, analytes the whatever the suitability what type of impurity is available once you didn't get the in earlier stages and due to the technology of advancement of the co columns stationary phases there are the numbers of uh, stationary phases available the hybrid columns are also available which can easily detect which can easily detect the all component in a single run and the hplc is uh, quite ahead of the gc technology gc technology is the gas chromatography where you can uh, degrade your sample 
and ionization forms or other forms you can detect your sample and the limitations of gc is different than the hplc because in uh, gc there might be the once the sample is degradable or a volatile then and then you can easily analyze by the gc but in hplc there are no any types of this type of restrictions yes there is a uh, restrictions that every analyte must have the chromophore chromophore is only the entity which is readily analyzed by the hplc systems so this is the uh, basic requirement that the component is not available not having the chromophore it cannot be uh, analyzed by the routine conventional hplc uh, using the uv or a pda detectors however this limitations can be uh, cut off uh, by the using of the fluorescent detector the elsd detector and the uh, refractive index detector yeah and uh, the drugs the limitations of the drugs where it is uh, extracted or uh, from your formulation whether in a formulation there are uh, numbers of binders are also available with the active ingredients the your drug actual drug so it may can give the uh, interference uh, related to the your analysis and also the industry which are using the conventional hplc method having the large number of organic solvent the hplc grade solvent which is very costly uh, related to the, your routine laboratory reagent the analytical grade reagent because this is highly uh, much expensive so you may have to deal with this uh, large amount of uh, utilization the uh, your amount for the analysis so the stationary phase and mobile phase earlier i also discussed the numbers of uh, variety of the stationary phase are available the silica column the ods the bds column amino cyano vinol the hybrid columns are also available which can leads to uh, straight reverse phase uh, chromatographic uh, application but there can be uh, can be utilized for the both reverse phase as well as the normal phase both application you can do on a single columns also in uh, some silica which can be end capped with the amino or a triethylamine uh, chemicals which is used for the normal phase columns as well as the reverse phase so again the main component of the hplc analysis it depends upon the its polarity with related to in case of silica gel whatever the columns you are using the packings the lipophilicity lipophilicity in the case of the reverse phase uh, packings and most drug which is having lipophilic and the polar uh, uh, groups is rightly available uh, for the uh, hplc analysis and by the mean of using this kind of uh, different uh, columns and uh, different mobile phase which is helpful for the utilization of your uh, hplc system for a new drug, uh, drug discovery the new drug molecule to evaluate with the uh, analysis how it may have uh, the contents and how to evaluate the my formulated drug
the other factor is the consider for the particular compound is the stationary phase the mobile phase uh, nature what type of you are using the mobile phase as i earlier discussed that your mobile phase is much impacting on your all analytes retention times the resolution the separation of these analytes from one to one because the several apis may have the impurity levels up to 0.1 percentage or a 0.05 percentage the certain uh, steroids or hormones or uh, uh, proteins the vitamins analysis it may uh, directly use for the human beings uh, much restricted for the 0.05 percentage of impurity levels so in active pharmas in ingredient uh, in the apis active, active pharmaceutical ingredients that you may have to restrict that much of impurity and you respect that impurity level you may have to change over the mobile phase and the stationary phase the optimum composition unless otherwise you even uh, get the optimum composition you may have face the every time problem for the separation the quantitation and uh, the qualitation of each analyte the each impurities so mind well with uh, hplc instrument is most sophisticated by the utilization of this instrument you may have to focus on the proper separation the proper uh, illusion ill, illusion order of your impurity and then you may find the proper solution of your methodology so it is a, again the different part is the method development activity now you, we are uh, discussing the hplc utilization for the uh, drug discovery so more polar mobile phase this is the basics where the how to extend how to uh, extend the hplc utilization for your final drug analysis so unless otherwise you doesn't know this type of uh, entity then you may have the several problems several uh, uh, questions related to your analyte so this is the basics the stationary phase the silica and the ods silica the ods silica is a none of uh, one but the silica uh, well uh, stationary phase is bonded with the another one uh, advanced uh, uh, decyl uh, silane carbon which is not easily uh, degrade with uh, your uh, sample analyte because the uh, as you know in water there are the h2o uh, is available and readily form the h plus and oh minus so once you introduce the water the mo polar mobile phase in your columns with the silica stationary phase so oh ions which readily Uh, dissolve the silica ions with this uh, oh is readily dissolve in your polar mobile phase and it will get a wash out from the column so your uh, total efficiency of column is uh, degrade and the whole analyte is not properly eluted but once you use the uh, and kept or uh, this uh, octadecyl silane columns the stationary phase it may get not harm your uh, analyte the illusion pattern and it is uh, very well versed so it's the commonly used solvent the hexane the mdc ipa then methanol okay and vice versa the water 
or a buffer see penny is the increasing strength of the polarity in reverse phase the decreasing strength of the polarity or increasing strength of the non polarities water methanol acetonitrile thf like guys so this is the basic interaction available for the polar column if you introduce the uh, more polar compound then it will get retain more times in the polar because is the normal phenomena is the polar polar is extraction is there and non polar non polar extraction the absorption is more then the polar to non polar and non polar to polar so once you introduce the polar more polar compound in your polar column it may elute later on and once you uh, introduce the non polar compound in your polar column the non polar compound will elute first for example the non polar compound in a polar column is eluted at the 2 minutes but polar polar compound may elute at 6 minute or 8 minute so if you hope you understand this uh, phenomena and similarly for the non polar columns also in non polar column the non polar compound is retain more than the polar compound so by the hvlc utilization you may have to check your compound is polar or a non polar or the impurities are polar or non polar once the sample a which analyzed by the polar compound the stationary phase column then the elution pattern is differ and the same and same sample analyze on a non polar column then your elution order is changed in a polar column the uh, the one impurity a is available at 2 minute rt impurity b is 3 minute impurity c is 4 minute and your analyte as a 5 minute but on a uh, respectively on non polar column your main analyte will come at 2 minute the impurity a at 4 minute impurity b might be at a 1.5 minute so this is the basic phenomena for the utilization of the hplc systems and the uh, mobile phase with respect to the polarity so when you doesn't understand the polarity of your sample you haven't found the proper uh, elution order the proper content of each analyte where it is available because the hplc system is just giving you the peaks but you cannot assume or you cannot directly derive the which component is available so for that you may have to spike the each impurity by the specification level then you got the where the impurity a b c and the your main component is available so hope you understand the phenomena of the hvlc utilization related to the polarity the hypo, uh, the hydrophobicity the more column uh, component the more stationary phase as well as the mobile phase uh, introduction the uh, reverse phase the normal phase analysis so here there are the several compounds which is having the low polar polarity to high polarity the prednisolone the beta methazone the beta methazone 17 valerate beta methazone 21 valerate beta methazone 17 21 dipropionate so these compounds having the different polarity and it may get the different elution order so by the mean of the regular the expected order would be prednisolone 
the vitamethazone, vitamethazone 17 well rate, vitamethazone 21 well rate, and finally the dimethazone dipropionate. So prednisolone is eluted faster shortly before vitamethazone because its lack of the lipophilic methyl group at a position 16. If the fluorine group is in a beta-methazone, also contribute to the lip lipophilicity. So, this lipophilic compound is playing a much role for the elution order. And in dipropionate, the beta-methazone beta having the two lipophilic ester group, which is masking the hydro hydroxyl group. Then, what it happens? it may have the more strongly retained by the lipophilic, the stationary phase. So you are, you will find the, this type of uh, chromatogram. The prednisolone is first eluted, the second one is vitamethazone, the 17 valerate, the 21 valerate, and the final is the dipropionate against the time constant on an uh, x-axis. So, in this uh, chromatogram, we found the mixture of the corticosteroids using the ODS column. And the mobile phase is the methanol and water, 75-25. So, elution order is much predicted. Okay. The lipophysity of the steroids, the reflex, the more lipophilic esters are used uh, at the lower side and it is used for the uh, creams and the ointment for the skin impact and the, uh, uh, the skin in, uh, infections okay and this uh, prednisolone and betamethasone is used for the certain uh, allergic uh, infections the screens and uh, very lipophilic and is uh, penetrating through your uh, skins. So, when we are using the polar silica column, the order of the these steroids are uh, reverse. Okay more reverse or a uh, less uh, reverse because of the behavior of the reverse phase uh, as according to the reverse phase uh, chronogram. So in this chronogram, while using the uh, silica col uh, ODS column, there are the difference between the resolution is not proper by the mean of the 21 valley rate and because these peaks are most adjacent. Okay. And here the prednisolone and betamethasone peak is well separated. So again, when the 21 valley rate and the dipropionate compound is in a lesser amount, it will get hamper the total quantitation not properly eluted. Okay. So in this uh, phenomena, when we are increasing the water content, so it will result in the longer retention of the component, which is having the dipropionate and the valerate, 21 valerate. So if you are a formulated uh, drug contains the 21 valerate and the uh, dipropionate, so the type of column might be chosen to before because to affect the both uh, compounds with well separate like silica column etc. Because you cannot use the ODS column. If ODS column is not proper for this uh, 21 valerate and the dipropionate because it will get uh, not proper visual with respect to the HPLC analysis. So this is the basic uh, 
uh, of uh, hydropolicity, the polarity, the beta mineral that is, uh, might be absent due to, related to your increasing of the non-polar compound. Okay. And the well rate is uh, much closer to the beta methazone and prednisolone. So you may have uh, not be possible to add more methanol because once you add the more methanol, it will reduce the polarity of your mobile phase and it will leads to losing the resolution between the meth beta methazone and prednisolone. So in this in this case, you may have to elute or use by the binary or a tertiary gradient systems. So, in that case, you may have to introduce the different mobile phase. First one, methanol water for seven minutes. Then, the rapid changing, the ramping of the solvent composition, methanol water, 85, 15, up to 17 minutes. So, then you will get the better resolution between the prednisolone, and betamethazone as well as the 21 well rate and the dipropionate. So hope you understand the uh, polarity uh, diffusion rate with related to the column for stationary phase. So it will uh, help with related to the binary system. So HVLC can be utilized with related to the isovatic systems once you got the single component. But when you are formulated drugs having the different uh, uh, APIs or a different uh, analyze the impurities, then you may have to deal with the binary systems or a gradient system, which is much helpful, very much helpful to elute or uh, quantify the uh, or a qualitize the each analyte properly. So again, this is the another one example with related to the ODS columns using the methanol water, the steroids. Uh, we earlier discussed now this is the uh, uh, forms of steroids the testosterone estradiol nandrolone and methyl testosterone so can you predict what is the elution order while using the ods columns and the odf column with methanol water in a 70-30 ratio. Anyone can answer me? Any student uh, can idea then also answer here because you can unmute and answer here. Otherwise you can write in the chat box also. So I'm, I, uh, I will wait for one minute if uh, any student cannot uh, able to answer, then I will provide the answer. Because you may have to keep on mind that the, how the elution pattern is available related to the ODS column and the polarity of the solvent. So what we discussed with the prednisolone, uh, betamethazone, the betamethazone 21 well rate, 17 well rate or a dipropionate.
Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, no, no answering. No answer inside. Okay, okay, okay. Asin sir, look at that. Click on it. Sir, do you see? One more thing, the options. Ha ha ha. Power point. Look at that. So now it is available in a full scale. No, sir, no. What is the issue? I didn't understand. Okay, okay, no problem. Kali wo to kali wo person de nitya tiche ne yeh kada yehlaat karu the thay desa kada ch. Content cut na thay jo kare. Ha ha ha, one minute. Okay, one minute. So, here the answer is <coughs> first the uh, estradiol, then uh, nandrolol then uh, testosterone and then finally the methyl testosterone because you you must uh, go through the polarity that eastern trial is only having the oh group is readily available so it is highly polar okay then uh, this nandrolone is the only the double bond available with the oxygen then testosterone is the double bond and here is the weak double bond is available which may increase the uh, polarity so correct answer is the estendiol then after nandrolone then testosterone and the missile testosterone so this uh, basics uh, every good coronavirus must to know that what is the impact of my analyte related to the polarity or polarity of the column stationary phase as well as the uh, your uh, mobile phase so as accordingly you have to choose the intermediate polar mobile phase uh, very polar mobile phase such uh, ion pairing mobile phase i am just here taking the example of uh, common mobile phase like methanol water only there are certain uh, critical mobile phase are also available that the methanol water the 20 millimol phosphate buffer the s3po4 the t addition the ph uh, adjustment up to 2 ph 4 ph 7 ph or 11 ph is compared uh, considering the uh, whatever whatever the analyte you are going to target establishment of your methodology for the HPLC analysis it's okay <clears throat> so here is the next phase with the HPLC and the control of pollution rate by the uh, ionizable compound by the pH adjustment so hope all are aware the pH range. pH range is the 0 to 14. 0 to 6.5 is a acidic pH. 6.5 to 7.5 pH is considering the neutral pH. And more than 7.5, 7.5 to 14 is considered the basic pH. So this pH is also uh, making a good role or uh, participate with the, your analyte related to the pk values of the each analyte it may get well illusion the well derivatization of your analyte and 
elute the proper line. So pH control is employed mainly in reverse phase chromatography. So why the pH control is widely acceptable with the reverse phase chromatography? Because because in reverse phase chromatography, you are using the more polar uh, mobile phase. And every mobile polar mobile phase is very much distinguished with the pH. Unless otherwise, with where whatever you are solvent you are using it is not reflecting the pH efficiency. pH is much effectively utilized or uh, impacted on your analyte when you are using the more polar or a water-based mobile phase. Once you use the solvent base, likewise hexane or a THF or a acetonitrile only, then pH is not at all affected your final analyte because the pH is not effectively endorsed with your stationary phase related to the mobile phase because you cannot change the pH of your stationary phase. You have to deal the play with the only pH of the mobile phase which is in your hand. Because stationary phase is much complicated uh, binding available in the SS columns, which cannot easily change. But your mobile phase, uh, as per your desire, as per your conveniency, you can change. So this is the basic that the pH control is only employed for the reverse phase chromatography, not for the normal phase chromatography. So, all you have to cons consider or keep in your mind that pH is only for the reverse phase chromatography. And earlier, the pH range is available for the uh, stationary phase is only 4 to 9 pH. But uh, in recent years, there are the much development for the stationary phase is uh, carried out by the uh, restrictions of the stationary phase, the numbers of uh, companies are developed. The columns which can be widely used for uh, from starting from the 1 pH to 12 pH or a 14 pH. The start uh, from the highly acidic to the highly basic. So you can choose the any single column, the polar column or a non-polar column. The hybrid column, which is uh, widely available right now in the market, so you can choose from that. Okay. So, <clears throat> where the pH of mobile phase creating a role, so. I again uh, discussed that the PK value. PK value is the none of other uh, thing that the, at the same pH value, your component uh, get uh, absorbance at certain levels. So these are the examples, the bupivacaine, the pentacaine, the prilocaine, the procaine. So each drug having the different pK value, okay, but very minor difference. The first one, first two are almost similar, 8.1. The procaine is the 7.9 and the procaine is 9.0. Sorry, I, my mistake only. Prilocaine is 7.9 and procaine is 9.0. So when you use the column, the ODS column and the mobile phase having the pH of 
to what will be the elution the procaine is first eluted which is having the pk value is 9 second one is the proline procaine uh, prelocaine is the 7.9 then the bupovacaine and the uh, pentacaine so when you choose the near about that pk value ph of your mobile phase then you got this type of uh, well separated peaks well eluted peak and uh, much separation is occurred but when you transform your mobile phase up to the 7.4 ph again the composition is same acetonitrile and uh, trace hydrochloride buffer the 60 40 but i only change the ph 8.4 to 7.4 the only one ph i change and see the drastically the retention time is get affected in earlier 8.4 ph the pentacaine is uh, eluted at 26.16 but when i change the ph 7.4 it becomes eluted faster about 10 minutes 10 to 11 minutes and eluted at 15.85 minutes so by the looking of this two two chromogram you may find that the 7.4 ph is well accurate instead of using the ph at the pk value so the phenomena is that you may have to check your mobile phase ph below below the pk value that may gives you a proper well separation the well eluted of all peaks related to your pk value so here is the uh, second phenomena where we are using the hydrocortisone and uh, the cortisone uh, mixture where the separation uh, may occurs by the directly using the acetonitrile the man <coughs> water is the 3070 in a uh, chromogram a chromogram b the different mobile phase acetonitrile methanol and water in different scenario and third one is the acetonitrile thf water so you check what is the different in first one the hydrocortisone and cortisone elution order is different and the cortisone peak is on a age of the age of the cortisone uh, hydrocortisone peak it's called a tailing so it is not much separated in b method the cortisone peak elution is merged with the hydrocortisone and the retention time is higher against the 4.27 we got the 8.21 and in a c the cortisone peak and the hydrocortisone peak elution order is changed why it is changed it is changed due to the mobile phase polarity what we change because once we use the acetonitrile in water the high polar uh, mobile phase then we introduce the uh, methanol in this uh, mobile phase so we we do not get the any separation of hydrocortisone and cortisone and when we introduce the lipophilic solvent the thf then we got the separation properly and the elution order is reverse the first one is eluted cortisone then second one is the hydrocortisone okay so in reverse phase 
stationary phase the columns whatever the difference between the manufacturer the definite uh, the variables what we are affecting for the regular analysis this all variables must be accessed before your method to be established the first one is the retention factor with the lipophilic compound this higher kpbs having the more surface area the more greater surface coverage area this the varies between when you are using the reverse phase columns and the mobile phase which is methyl oil and water so this at this time the reverse phase stationary phase coating the area of surface is widely readily available for much interaction with your analyte so once the more surface the more area of the uh, columns is available then your analyte is uh, more separated from the each one second one is the shape selectivity so you may have to choose the which type of uh, uh, peak eluted so again in a uh, hydrocortison the peak shape here is not proper because at the age of the column uh, age of the hydrocortison peak is available so you may have to check with the uh, shape selectivity and shape selectivity is uh, again the ratio of the capacity factors which is for the mobile phase and the stationary phase so retention time of a molecule via lipophilic uh, lipophilic interaction depends with the molecular surface that interact with your stationary phases so the surface of large lipophilic group less of the uh, molecules which will be in contact with the surface can be contact uniformly and surface more uh, fully uh, interacted so it can be uh, checked with related to the roll over of the surface molecule where your uh, spheres the small uh, effective contact area is available with uh, your column and the mobile phase so there is the region where you got the basic of your separations so that one can be very sensitive or less sensitive related to the surface of the stationary phases it can be resulted in the uh, flatness of the peak or a stationary phase uh, bindings etc so this is the water uh, water phenyl and the triphenylene the components which is uh, binded with your stationary phase it can be uh, having in water phenol you may check in on a plain surface there are the less area is available and in triphenylene there are the more surface area is available once you imp implemented or uh, in introduce the higher surface area then your separation your analyte uh, resolution will get faster and more so number 4 is the hydrogen bonding so these all factors are quietly use use for the your proper separation for proper elution proper illustration of your all analytes so is there no other thing this is a capacity factor and it is uh, measured by the uh, phenol and the caffeine by the ratio of the capacity factor of the phenol and uh, caffeine so this is the 
check for the stationary phase is the uncapped celeron and the capped celeron. So in uncapped celeron, they are rapidly used for the normal phase chromatography and the end capped uh, celeron group is used for the normal reverse phase chromatography and that will much helpful for the proper uh, saturation of your component and proper illustration of the uh, systems. So, basic uh, HPLC utilization related to the stationary phase is more important than once you do not understand the stationary phase uh, characteristic that will uh, result in your overall analytical problems. So, up to this, we have uh, gone through the what type of analytical, what is the hyperprobability, the lipophilicity, the, what is the peak uh, uh, PK value, what is the P, pH uh, interrupts, uh, interaction with your mobile uh, mobile phase to the stationary phase that will hamper or affect the overall HVLC analysis. So after that, we check with the detectors what we are uh, going to use for the uh, utilization of the uh, HVLC system. So again, I earlier discussed that the widely used is the UV detectors. The diode array detectors is the advanced version of the UV detector. But the, uh, some components, the some drugs which cannot having the chromophobes or very less or very poor chromophobes, it can be analyzed by the ELSD or RID or a fluorescent detector. And this type of uh, drugs are mainly available as the sugars, the lipid, the surfactants, the amino acids, some proteins or some uh, anticholinergic uh, uh, drugs which is not having the chromophobes. So it cannot be give the UV absorbance, the UV uh, lambda, the UV maxima. So you may have to deal with the refractive index detector or a fluorescent detector or a ELSD. ELSD is the airview light scattering detector. Okay. So these are the almost basic the implementation, the uh, HPLC is, uh, systems utilization. So now the application of HPLC for the quantitative analysis in the formulation. So in formulation, there are the two types of uh, analytes are available because once you gone through the each drugs, these formulated drugs having the content in a MCU or a in a microgram of active pharmaceutical ingredient, then you must quantify the each active ingredient to check for the final formulated drug. So once you are, it's a difference in the phenomena, it's called as assaying of your drug. So assay is not proper in your formulated drug, then it cannot be administrator administrated for the human beings. Once you claim your uh, drug contains is 50 milligram or 500 milligrams or recently changed as a para paracetamol is the 650 milligram. Earlier is the 500 milligram. So your tablet or a formulated capsule or injections might have the content plus or minus 10 percentage of the desired value. 
whatever the label claim value of your drug the tablet or a capsules so you may have to check the quant, uh, check the quantitative con, uh, content of your each analyte each active ingredient in a your formulated drug or a formulated content so this is the rapid or a most uh, acceptable uh, application the quantitative technique or the formulated drug because the capsule or a tablet which may consist the only the 50 mg or a 2 mg or a 5 mg or a 500 mg but rest of all consists the binders the starch or a cellulose or a uh, non active uh, materials which is used for the binding uh, consider as a binding agents so it cannot be having the same uh, content during the suppression or a punching of the each tablet or a uh, final formulation of the drugs or a or your tablets so this apis you have to control by the selecting the proper columns the optimization of the uh, proper mobile phases to use of the uh, optimum detector which will provide you the optimum detection level of your component so in this uh, uh, analysis you may face the several problems like the preservatives what you have uh, added the color coated uh, uh, colorant the degradant the binders what you have uh, uh, added in your tablet or capsules so it's called con or a consider as a placebos so you may have to run the placebos properly which is not interfere with your active pharma ingredients the apis so this is the basics for the hplc analysis for the formulated drugs or a formulated products so in some formulation there are uh, more than one uh, active ingredient is available once you check with the paracetamol and the diclofenac sodium then uh, another one is a tramadazole uh, active ingredient with combination of the domperidone or uh, rabeprazole and uh, other uh, drugs is the combination of drugs is available in a capsule or a tablet so it may have the different uh, analytical challenging challenges you may have faced related to the methodology so you may have to choose the analysis based on the calibration by the external external standard the internal standard uh, calibration method where you have to introduce the known amount of uh internal standard in each analyte each sample and you have to draw the calibration curve that will helpful to determine the actual content of the each analyte uh hope all you are understand what i am uh, talking about because in formulation you may uh, you already knows the several combination of drugs are available with the binders so you you may have to choose the right method the optimum method for the assaying or a quantification of that particular analyte so it may once even if you not you have not uh, selecting the proper the optimized method for the example of paracetamol and 
paracetamol 500 mg and diclofenac sodium uh, 5 mg contained tablet so what will happen you have to uh, rerun the each tablet uh, the components in different method once you uh, initial check with the paracetamol content then after you may have to assaying the diclofenac sodium so at a single level at a single analysis you cannot check the both content unless otherwise you may gone through with the proper separation of both drugs the paracetamol and the diclofenac sodium in a single method with disregarding the interference of your binders the starch or a cellulose or other colorant which may affect the final elution so hope you all are understanding that as what i understood uh, illustrated you the uh, cortisone hydrocortisone and the cortisone uh, uh, mobile phase the comodogram then the example of uh, prednisolone the betamethasone the 17 valerate 21 valerate and the propionate uh, illustration hope you now not remind so i will re go through with that uh, particular uh, uh, c this one so your formulated drug consider uh, with respect to this example your formulated drug may contain this five uh, apis so you may have to choose the optimum level of method hblc method the proper uh, ph value the proper uh, lambda max where you got the proper response of each analyte without interfering each one so this is the uh, basic there where you have to more focus on the uh, selectivity of the optimum methods okay so this uh, formulated drugs is can be uh, considered with the external standards by the known amount of uh, external standard to be an, uh, to be test uh, inject on the hblc system and got the x area and uh, again the prepare the sample and you got the y area so you may have to calculate likewise the assaying the area of sample divided by area of standard multiplied by dilution factor of standard divided by the dilution factor of sample and multiplication of the potency of the standard so in this calculation you will get the actual content the weight by weight content of your uh, particular analyte likewise if you consider the paracetamol then you may get the paracetamol weight by weight percentage which is as per your, your label claim or not so by the formulated drug it the final result may vary by the 90 to 110 percentage from the targeted uh, value even if you you are targeting the 500 mg as a label claim then your final value may come by 450 to 550 okay so this is the 
Heidel is saying result value in your sample analyte, then it provides you the comply of your analysis. Unless otherwise, you are facing many problems uh, related to your uh, interference of another drugs. So, when you are another one, first I have uh, cleared this uh, external standard method. Second one is the spiking study, the recovery method. The recovery method, once you spike the 50 ppm, sorry, 50 milligram of analyte in your sample and by the cross-checking of uh, area content, even if you got the 50 person, uh, 50 milligram plus or minus 10 percent of your uh, recovery in a spike sample, then your method is very good, very accurate, very precise and quietly used for the routine purpose. Okay, so the known weight of formulation can be compared with directly uh, with the calibration curve. So if the solution may vary with your poor standard or your substance, what I uh, describe you. So, this is the steps what I have uh, described in a simplest manner to how to calculate the uh, content of the paracetamol or passing of your uh, in, uh, content in your final formulated drug. Okay. So, you may have to prepare first the analytical standard properly as a stock solution, then dilute up to the desired level of the uh, your final con uh, concentration and then uh, prepare a set of the set of the concentration of the range means the 50 milligram 100 milligram the 150 milligram 500 milligram or a 750 milligram then you inject in your system and draw a calibration curve so you you will get a uh, correlation coefficient more than 0.9 then your system is well established your method is well uh, very well executed okay and you may have to inject the blank solution so why the blank injection to be imposed because due respect of your placebos or any type of carryover which can be resultant or a malfunction of your final resulting. So, when you inject the uh, blank, then any kind of carryover, likewise the 50 area or a 1000 area, so it can be reduced from your original uh, concentration area then you get the proper absolute area of the peak. So, this is the methodology for the external uh, calibration curve and to establish the proper calculation of your each analyte. Okay. So, again, this is the very precise to allocate the uh, allocate of the sample extract and the concentration at the midpoint calibration, the diluted solution, the replica. So you can inject in a replicate manner of your uh, prepared sample and check the relative standard deviation also. Okay. So here I am giving you the example of the assay of paracetamol aspirin in a tablet. Okay, so hope you understand the, how to prepare the standard uh, solutions and a sample solution. So, basically the paracetamol tablets is more uh, difficult than more posed to that uh, to measure a because the single paracetamol 
contained is uh, very easy. But when you are con uh, combi combine the two drugs, the paracetamol and the uh, aspirin, so such type of two major ingredient, the codeine phosphate is cannot uh, determine using the uh, chromatographic systems. So it diluted by the column in the void volume. So you may have to convert the check of your uh, phosphate content. Okay. So in ODS column is quite suitable and the uh, aspirin is ionized extremely as the 4 pH buffer. So you may have to uh, select the your mobile phase pH by the 4 pH with the uh, considering the pK value of the paracetamol and the aspirin. Uh, sorry, one minute. So, uh, Shin, sir, the, uh, is there need to break? Uh, then you can also, we can also take break, sir. No, 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 no. It's okay. Okay. No problem. Okay, okay, continue. Sir. If we, uh, if students want the break, then uh, I am okay with that. But, uh, okay, see, student uh, or participant need a break? No, sir, it's okay. Oh. Okay, okay. Sir, can you only screen all the issue and put the insert ma jane thay sakse ya layout ma? Ha, tiya tiya ani baju ma. Na le, home page ma layout ma. Home page chen home page ma. Insert ni baju ma home and tiya baju ma layout. Aye layout. Okay, okay. Ha, tiya tiya. Ne ya. Che. Insert ma kya aave che? Kapila kya aave che? Kapila che. Sorry. Kapila to kiti thi. एक I need the anti Something probably. You will more content genuous and they cast in him. Ah, but ah, yes, that's right. Anyone in student can help me for this one? Slide soma also the barabar says slide soma. Slide soma, custom slide soma. Okay. Fourth, fourth attempt. Four. Okay. Sir, you click on sir. No, it's a. 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 So try the review option. Review. Huh? No review is the another. No one. no. When? Mm -hmm. Huh? Now it is okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, the reading view is okay. <laughs> now I got that.
Ah, yes. So, when we are uh, dealing with the paracetamol and aspirin on a combination of the drug in a tablet, so that we have to check with the PK value. The ODS column is quite suitable. So, aspirin is ionized extensively above 4 pH. And uh, this uh, pH of mobile phase. Hope you all readable. Okay. So, the pH of mobile phase is to be manipulated to at the region where you have to check with the paracetamol without pretending a such a long because once you uh, retain the paracetamol as a long then aspirin will get uh, uh, affected so the pk value of the paracetamol is much higher than that of aspirin and it is unaffected by the adjustment in the ph of the mobile phase so when you adjust the ph then uh, paracetamol is not affecting the aspirin uh, illusion pattern. Okay, so this is the assay method where the uh, tablet contains the paracetamol. Likewise, it's an example, not hundred percent sure this uh, formulated drug. Okay, paracetamol is two fifty mg. Aspirin is, aspirin is 250 mg and the codeine, codeine phosphate as a binder or a suspend uh, uh, this uh, what the suppressor likewise uh, codeine phosphate is 6.8 mg the assay described as a table uh, for paracetamol tablets it can be used through the 0 0.05 molar of sodium acetate buffer having the pH 4.4. So, in this uh, mobile phase, that we have to prepare a different concentration of standard solutions of uh, aspirin and paracetamol. Okay, and you may not have to uh, neglect the mobile phase. Uh, we can use this mobile phase as a diluent also diluent to avoid the any kind of uh, blank uh, uh, interference because once we use the another one diluent likewise the plain solvent or uh, uh, different uh, water and acetonitrile concentration then your mobile phase is acidic ph having the uh, buffer it may get some uh, noisy baseline or a baseline drifting is available. So, we have to select the same diluent for the preparation of standard. Okay. And this is the concentration of 1.0 to 1.5 mg per 100 ml. So, it is uh, likewise the concentration is 1000 ppm uh, sorry 1 ppm to 1.5 ppm so this is the typical chromatogram for the paracetamol so here due respect to the codeine phosphate the uh, peak is elevated at the dead volume uh, time is a considering as a SF, okay, and paracetamol peak is eluted at 3.31 uh, RT, and aspirin is 17.42. Okay, so in this case, what buffer we are uh, using, and the pH range is 3.7, and acetic acid 0 0.05 molar acetic acid in acetonitrile having the 85 percentage of uh, 
uh, volume by volume concentration using the column 150 mm per per uh, 6 mm ods column and flow rate is 1 and this second one uh, chromograph which is having the 4.4 pa value of 0 0.05 molar sodium acetate as a buffer and using the same concentration level 85 percentage volume by volume respect to the acetonitrile and same column so again you check what we discuss with the prednisolone the betamethasone the 7 well 17 well rate 21 well rate and propionate here also the same type of phenomena is available the aspirin peak is much wider so it takes the or consume the more area irrespective of the HUL. But when we use the HUL PK value, the 4.4 pH, then so the peak, peak is well gosine, the very uh, tangent peak is available of both paracetamol as well as the aspirin. So this is the methodology where you have to uh, some mod take uh, some modification, the consideration of the PK value, the consideration of the uh, polarity for the proper utilization of the HPLC system. Because the HPLC system where you are working, so it cannot be uh, you have a uh, more area that you may kept as ideal or uh, you, uh, utilize very haphazardly you may have to pinpoint utilization with the optimization of your method your uh, mobile phase the choosing right column the right uh, pk value mobile phase the polarity the all aspect you have to consider in your mind for the optimum and the proper utilization okay so hope you all aware that the uh, during formulation the each tablet uh, is not containing the uniform api ingredient so you may have to take a minimum 10 tablet 20 tablet or a, uh, 50 tablet or a 50 capsules for the uh, assaying of your analyte because once you got the proper uniform sample the analyte from your uh, final formulated uh, product then you may claim the actual value in your uh, marketed uh, product so we are here we take the 20 tablets the weight is suppose uh, 11.2698 randomly then uh, we crush that uh, tablet okay and the powder taken for the uh, sample preparation 283.8 milligram that what i consider in my example the area of sample and the area of standard multiply by dilution factor of standard and dilution factor of sample so here the weight of the sample is uh, here and the weight of the standard paracetamol is 135.5 mg the aspirin is 12.3 milligram then the mean area of aspirin and paracetamol is 15366 and paracetamol is 445335. So, this is the calibration equation from the different linearity curve and direct calculation also you may calculate by the uh, establishing the equation, the area of area of sample divided by. Uh, area of standard multiplied by dilution factor and vice versa the sample concentration and the potency okay this is the dilution whatever you consider for the preparation of the sample 
so again the same scenario which you were i illustrated uh, earlier the calibration curve using the uh, uh, using the different uh, standard the different content of the paracetamol 500 mg the phenyl propyl amine uh, another one tablet uh, api contained in a tablet with the paracetamol and the different uh, mobile phase concentration the 0.05 molar acetic acid okay the weak acid mobile phase that the uh, phenol group in the formation to ionize okay this is the calibration curve what i have uh, drive through and here we got the correlation is r square is a one is the very much accurate even if you got the r square 0.9 is well sufficient certain cases you may consider this r square value up to 0.8 also because uh, the formulate in your formulated final product final dose your api concentration is 2 mg or 5 mg then the error chances is more than the guidelines the uh, pharma copy has also giving you the such type of relaxation of this linearity or assaying of the substance from 80 to 120 or 90 to 120 based on the final concentration of the drug so this is the comparison of uh, paracetamol tablets uh, standard and the samples so again the same phenomena the assaying of the paracetamol the how to prepare the shock solution and uh, <coughs> to prepare a series of solution the 0.5 1 1.5 2 okay mg per 100 ml uh paracetamol in stock here is the data what we got from the uh, standard solution the concentration with the 0 0.5044 1.09 009 1.513 2.018 5.2.523 and uh, this is the area of the uh, chromogram here is the calibration curve and we found the r square is the 1.000 so here the another data uh, generated from the different uh, uh, analysis here we got the r square is the 0.994 okay so hope you understand the uh, two three types of the assay assaying method you using the optimum hplc uh, method considering the ph the mobile phase the detector uh, lambda max etc so i have here consider the uh, plain plain api content the assay the second one is the combination of the uh, two drugs with related to the different pk values and right now the third one is the hydrocortisone cream with one point calibration uh, against an internal standard so previous one two methods are is the external uh, standard calibration method and the content method here we are dis uh, discussing the internal standard method so the preparation is the same the essay what we are using with the ods column is the widely uh, uh, very well widely used for the 
several numbers of analyses in a pharmaceutical industry ods the bds column and it is called also the c18 column the common name is c18 columns also so this c18 columns is widely used for the different type of uh, different kind of analysis so here the very good uh, separation of uh, corticosteroids can be achieved by the ods column with suitable ratio of methanol water as a eluent as an eluent uh, this uh, hydrocortisone fortifying assay using the beta methazone as an internal standard here we are considering the uh, internal standard is the beta methazone so we have to check the uh, structure the moiety the behavior the characteristic of the beta methazone ki what is the influence on the hydrocortisone so beta methazone is very close to the hydrocortisone but it is more lipophilic it eludes from the ods column okay so for that we i already discussed with uh, my uh, previous slide the hydrocortisone and the beta uh, beta methazone the peak separation so in this assay this is the uh, british pharmacopeia uh, assay method for the hydrocortisone cream this is uh, available with the british pharmacopeia so in this method we will use the internal standard for a extract first extraction step then after we will carry out the another extractions to uh, lose the any kind of our content or of our sample because once you extract the content from the cream so it cannot be easily extracted in a single step because whatever the surface area covered by the diluent and it becomes like a cream is likewise some jelly type so it cannot be dispersed easily the surface area is not easily available with your uh, extracted uh, solvent extracted solvent so you may have to repeat the frequent extractions to uh, extract the whole amount of your active ingredients from the cream so again there is a interference whatever the binders is available in the uh, cream which is used for the making the cream so that that binders may affect your uh, extraction so you may have carried out the 1 2 3 or 5 extraction unless you got the uh, full uh, combi combine the con uh, concentration of your analyte which you are going to claim during the method development or a final uh, sample analysis okay so extraction is necessary in the case of cream because what i discuss the so would be some clog up and uh, that cannot be directly uh, introduced in your hvlc system because the hvlc system is not meant for the high viscous high viscosity materials it is giving the below below 2 uh, centipos uh, diluent or a solvent which can be easily administered by the hvl system so likewise this oil, oily greasy or a creamy sample cannot be directly uh, administered in a hvl system so we have to make such dilutions in our diluent it can be a combination of your mobile phase or a, or a one part of your mobile phase the solvent which which is easily extracted uh, took 
place in your extraction process okay the uh, uh, corticosteroids are sufficiently polar so that you may have to use the non polar uh, column and remain in the methanol water layer as the low solubility in a hexane while in oil excipients are more uh, extracted by the uh, non polar uh, solvent like hexane or a chloroform or mdc so this is the uh, chromatogram the three chromatograms i have uh, taken for you first one is the calibration standard the hydrocortisone and the beta meta beta methazone second one is the cream extract plus internal standard okay and third one is the cream extract uh, without the addition of internal standard so is the direct uh, measurement of the hydrocortisone so here you can see visually that the beta methazone response is almost similar almost similar for all three analysis because it is mandatory then once you got the internal standard uh, recovery proper related to the calibration standard your uh, sample and the without internal standard then you may got the proper uh, calibration curve and the ratio related to the internal standard and the your analyte this ratio is final resulting the your concentration the content of your systems okay so here there is the brief outline the mixture whatever we are using the methanol and 50% nacl in the two mixer 2 gm one the mixture together the 10 ml of uh, 0.1% weight by volume solution of hydrocortisone and prepare beta methazone internal standard solution then add methanol and make up to the volume to 100 ml this is the preparation for the internal standard and uh, with your uh, main component the analyte the standard of hydrocortisone so again the so the different solution preparation this much preparation is much helpful for your calibration curve so the cream is 10 mg taken in 10, 30 ml with uh, help, uh, again addition of 10 ml dispersed in warm hexane to remove hexane lower layer which consists the methanol and water layer and hexane is the non uh, dispersed in a methanol or a water layer is the because hexane is a non polar solvent so we will get the two layers the one is a hexane layer and second one is the methanol water layer at the bottom side so we can uh, collect the water methanol layer separately and combine the all washing in a original extract and then dilute with the water so here we you have to take a much precautionary measure to uh, discard any any part of your methanol water layer if you discard that much amount it will reflect the total amount uh, deflection from your target concentration so that much of amount is uh, not uh, not available for analysis you during the preparation during the extraction that type of precautions you may have to take okay so again this is this is the first the second the extraction the third one is the final uh, solution to be prepared with related to the beta methazone as a considering as internal standard and analyze with the methanol water mobile phase and ods column and here is the lambda 
max is uh, selected as a 240 nanometer okay and the calculation to be carried out whatever i earlier discussed the calculation formula the area of phytocarnosian peak and the metamethasone peak is a calculation as a response factor and another terms it's called as a response ratio okay or a area ratio of the uh, your standard and the internal standard your sample analyte and the internal standard okay so this is the in a calibration solution is our standard solution and a sample solution is the our exit final sample which is going to be uh, assaying for our hydrocortisone content and amount of uh, calculation is the give illustrated in this equation so this is the calculation how to uh, calculate the about percentage how much the area okay and this is the concentration what you get with related to the beta methazone and the hydrocortisone okay this is the response the area divided by the uh, beta methazone uh, standard area is the response is 1.1144 in the solution 3 is the sample is the 1.3703 so how much the concentration in your sample is the 1.3703 divided by the standard uh, response 1.1144 okay multiply by the actual concentration what you have consider for the standard elevation is differently term as the potency so this is the 0.0 final resulting is 0.01239 weight percentage weight by volume and its synonyms is 0.01239 gram per 100 ml so this is the your final concentration what you are uh, claiming for your drugs or a formulated drug which is uh, marketed by your organization or your form or your institute okay this is again the different calcul calculation and this assay what the uh, concentration you got is a 0.01239 gram per 100 ml so 100 divided by 100 multiplied by this concentration and the weight of sample whatever we take for the the cream uh, take for the analysis is 1.173 gram so final percentage is 0.01239 gram divided by 1.173 whatever the sample gram taken for the analysis on 100% basis it is 1.056 percentage weight by weight so this is the stated amount contained in a 1 percentage weight by weight so by the 100% basis how much is there so 1.056 divided by 1 multiply by 100 is the 105.6 so what is the actual content derived from your sample after taking the sample 1.173 using the internal standard is 105.6 which is well within the limit of the british pharmacopeia requirement and limit is 92 110 so you got the assay is the 105.6 so so what it is means what it means your sample your formulated cream your formulated uh, tablet or uh, your formulated product meeting the desired pre established specification by the pharmacopeia so your method is very well regarded very well precise related to the final content of your analyte okay so hope you understand so this is the another one technique 
is involved for the uh, more specialized for assaying of uh, hvlc technique so as i earlier discussed the more than 80 percentage all separations occur by the reverse phase chromatography and c18 columns and the certain few examples uh, here i uh, derived for you the assay of adrenaline injection by chromatography with an uh, anionic ion pairing agent the assay of second one is assay of ascorbic acid by chromatography with an cationic ion pairing reagent and electrochemical detection using the EL, elsd detector okay the third one assay of proteins with wide pore hvlc packing so hvlc columns are also having the different type of specification they are coming from different kind of uh, length the 100 mm 150 mm 200 mm 250 mm 300 mm the pore size of your stationary phase is starting from 100 angstrom the 200 angstrom the 50 angstrom and the packings are c8 c18 amino whatever i earlier discussed the amino phenyl cyano pure silica vice versa so here is the wide bore columns is the more than 100 angstrom uh, particle size it considering as a wide bore hvlc packing and the separation of enantiomer by chiral hvlc so here i just give you the chiral uh, components in uh, conventional hvlc analysis you cannot derive the enantiomers from the uh, simple this uh, uh, reverse phase or a normal phase uh, chromatography analysis because the enantiomer as you know the almighty is uh, same only the cis and trans position is happen in a enantiomeric uh, components so in that case we may have to introduce the uh, chiral columns chiral columns is the nothing but they are having the uh, chiral carbon availability in a stationary phase so the same phenomena for polar to polar extraction the non polar to non polar extraction is there so in these chiral columns when you introduce the cis uh, chiral uh, as a stationary phase then your cis isomer is retained more than the trans isomer so during analysis you got the first peak of the trans isomer and then after the cis isomer and vice versa when you introduce the trans isomer as a stationary phase sorry trans chiral uh, stationary phase is introduced then trans isomer is uh, first diluted then cis isomer is later on so in normal conventional hvlc system there is no separation occurred by the chiral analysis so hope i cover the, all of the uh, major techniques and assaying of the uh, all quantitation formulated drugs is the single in a combination of drug in a cream with the uh, combination of chloride phosphate and uh, other uh, entities so here we briefly discuss uh, uh, the adrenaline injection by chromatography so in the all components the methodology is similar here we are just adding the highly water soluble amines 
okay as a ion pair uh, considering as a ion pair reagents so ion pair reagents is nothing but uh, this type of uh, amines which is uh, coated on the ods stationary phases so is the ion pairing uh, stationary phase which will get the more interaction of adrenaline and giving a more electrostatic interaction the elution occurs with the combination of displacement of adrenaline and its ion pair by sodium ions and migration of ion pair itself in the mobile phase so the both type of in ion pairing uh, chromatography hplc technique the two type of displacement of the uh, ion pairing is occurred once with the stationary phase and uh, another one is the mobile phase so your uh, separation is much uh, with conventional hplc in ion pair reagent ion pairing uh, technology that you may get the well proper resulted peaks the impurities Consi uh, considering the comparing the uh, conventional hplc so because this is the uh, two type of uh, displacement here once with the stationary phase and component and second one is the mobile phase and your component so the two type of uh, separation technique is taken place okay so again in this uh, uh, ion pairing uh, reagent technique you can have a uh, elution with the ELA, elsd detector so even if the non chromophore material is there non chromophore uh, substance is there you may get the proper elution and readily oxidable just like as a catechol group of adrenaline okay in ascorbic acid remember cationic this is the ionic uh, anionic uh, ion pairing this is the cationic ion pairing reagent and really probable detection the similar here we are using the another one the citramide okay used for the ion pairing reagent in this the citramide is uh, cationic ion ion pairing reagent in a reverse phase column and provide a uh, well separated uh, ascorbic acid uh, highly polar uh, component okay this is the interaction between uh, the ascorbic acid and the stationary phase where it is covered with uh, ion pairing reagent and citramide as a ion pairing uh, reagent okay yeah thank you very much uh, if you are having any questions related to the hplc utilization of uh, different technique the polar 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 chromatography polar non polar chromatography the reverse phase chromatography non polar uh, sorry normal phase chromatography ion pairing uh, chromatography the chiral chromatography please uh, let me know or just ma message me and uh, if you are having any question uh, by the uh, end of this session tomorrow or the day after or uh, after a one week uh, dr akbari having my uh, contact mail id so you can make Uh, just uh, mail to me so i will definitely get back to you with uh, proper resolution with your uh, uh, analyte as well as your impurity profiling and the proper separations yeah dr akbari hello
might be dr akbar having some uh, communication problem just hold on till time till time all all you participant if you are having some queries you can uh, unmute your microphone and uh, ask me directly Any question, uh, dear student, related to this topic? Uh, Dr. Akbari, yes, sir. Uh, if uh, students are currently not in a position to ask me any question, then I have already shared you my uh, contact mail ID also. So they can contact me at type of any type of question they are in having in my mind by today or tomorrow or a day after or or any time you uh, they are free to uh, contact connect with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, from our side means for example our student side uh, general equation. Uh, for example, any student uh, want to go into ADL department. Or for example, let me go to QA department. For example. In yeah. both department, uh, what are the their basic question related to HPLC? They are asked in the interview, and on the base of uh, they can select more probability. Uh, no, you are discussing the two uh, areas. One is the QA and one is the ADL. Yes. So yes. I first uh, one with the QA. Even if you are uh, mean for the QA uh, interview, then in QA, there are the numbers of uh